How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student, and today we're going to be covering over the phenomenon called trans broken arm syndrome. This is a very important term that anyone who's trans or loves someone who is trans and knows that they have to go through the medical system know because it's a phenomenon that often has to do with the bias that we face in the medical system by medical providers. In its pure definitions, trans broken arm syndrome is the phenomenon that oftentimes healthcare providers don't address the fact that trans people have the same healthcare needs as everyone else and we're othered to the point where our general healthcare needs are not even being addressed by the provider. A really common example of trans broken arm syndrome is a trans person going to the emergency room for something like a broken arm, maybe chest pain. You know, they're going to the emergency room for something that a lot of people experience that's acute and needs emergent medical care. But when they arrive at the emergency room, the physician or nurse or whoever is there taking care of the patient is way more fixated on the fact that the patient is trans and more curious about knowing about their trans health history than they are about the emergent need right now like fixing a broken arm or addressing chest pain, which could be a heart attack. I actually talked about this syndrome to uh, future medical doctors at a speaking event that I did earlier this week, where I talked to medical students about the fact that, yes, you are going to have trans patients and you're going to be a little bit curious because it's not a patient population that you're used to, but you need to emphasize the fact that this person is a human being and that if the questions you're asking don't align with why they're actually at the visit, you shouldn't be asking those questions because at that point, you're asking those questions for your own curiosity rather than actually trying to help the patient. And it's not just some article that I read online. I too have experienced trans broken arm syndrome and also my friends have as well. I remember about two years ago, I went in to get a general eye exam, like it wasn't even about me being trans. It was about the health of my eyes. And I remember the provider, the optometrist, going through my medical records and asking me questions like, why are you taking testosterone? Why, uh, what about your menstrual periods? And I was just like, I'm here for an eye exam. <laughs> like, I don't need to tell you about why my medical records show that I'm taking testosterone if it doesn't have anything to do with the fact with my eye health. I'm here for my annual eye exam. Can you please just check my eyes, make sure I have 20-20 vision. I'm not killing people on the streets while I'm driving so that I can get my prescription if I need it to. But she was so adamant about asking those very, very personal and unnecessary questions. And at that point, I haven't gotten my feet sturdy enough to advocate for myself. Unfortunately, I still am very bad at advocating for myself, even though I tell thousands of people on the internet to advocate for themselves. But I remember telling um, the optometrist straight up, I am transgender and that's why I take those medications that you're keep, you keep asking me about. And then she got super awkward because I don't think she knew how to handle a trans patient. I don't think she's ever had a trans patient. And I'm pretty sure she doesn't even like trans people because the entire patient encounter after that was incredibly awkward. She stopped talking to me and just quickly did my eye exam and left the room and never came back to talk to me again. Her, she had her assistant come in and talk to me and give me my results. And just yesterday, I had a friend who is a trans woman message me about the fact that she went to urgent care for an injury that she got, she needed like mild stitches. And for some reason, the medical assistant the entire time kept bothering her about her menstrual periods. And she kept saying, you know, I can't answer that question because I don't have them. And then the medical assistant started to further trigger her by saying, why don't you have them anymore? Why, why this, why that? Even though those questions had nothing to do with the fact of why she's in urgent care. And I know, I know, I know questions about cycles and things like that are very important in a primary care setting, but definitely not in an acute urgent slash emergency care setting where you're supposed to be there to get one or two problems fixed. So the next part of this video that I really wanna focus in on is the fact that how do you prevent trans broken arm syndrome as a patient? 
Because at the end of the day, we're still in a society where the large majority of medical providers are not trauma-informed, are not trans-informed, are not queer-informed, are not minority-informed. Unfortunately, even though there's been lots of movements to get that going, it's still going to take a, quite a number of years. So the best thing we can do is to advocate for ourselves as trans patients. So the first thing you can do is if you notice that you've gone into an appointment for whatever reason that has nothing to do with other parts of yourselves, but the doctor keeps asking you about those parts of yourselves, you have the power to tell the doctor or medical provider, PA, NP, that, hey, I'm here for this reason. I know you have those questions, but that's not the reason for my visit. Can we put those questions off for later when we reschedule for like an annual wellness exam or anything of that sort? That's the passive way. Now, if you want to be even braver and stronger, <laughs> which I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little uh, bit of a wimp when it comes to advocating for myself, but I absolutely 100% support this. You can just straight up say, I'm not going to answer those questions. I want to address this, this, and this, and I don't have the capacity to answer any other questions other than those this, this, and this factors. And at that point, when you've made your opinion and your statement very clear to the provider, they understand that at that point, they can't keep asking you invasive questions. And if they still do, that's when you say, well, you're not really respecting my time or me, That so I'm going to leave and I'm going to talk to another provider. And if you have another provider here, please let me talk to them because I don't feel very safe with you. And you should never ever feel bad about advocating yourself in that way. Even if the provider feels very uncomfortable in that situation, it's not their right to feel comfortable in that situation because they have created an uncomfortable situation for you and you come first as a patient. And there's been multiple times where non-trans patients have been this way in practices that I've worked at and the doctor completely respected the patient's wishes, either changed the subject or got another provider to look at the patient. So if cis, straight, heteronormative patients can do it, so can you and you have the absolute right to ask for those needs. Anyways, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you learned something from this video about trans broken arm syndrome. It's not talked enough about and we should talk more about it. I hope you share this video with someone who may benefit from the information that I gave out for free out into the internet for y'all. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah. This is Ben.